got news for you. The sad thing is, you and I, I cannot do what Jesus did just by copying how he did it. I heard a, Vance Abner talked about this, and he said, Jesus not only used a number of methods to heal people, he healed one man by uh, touching him. He healed one man by touching him once, another man by touching him again twice. Another time he spat in the dirt, right, and he made mud and he, uh, or clay, put it on the eyes of a man and told him to go wash it off in the pool of Siloam. Vance Havner had said that if these four men that were, were healed today, we'd have four different kinds of churches by Friday. <laughs> You'd have the Word of Faith Church, the Once Touched Church, the Twice Touched Church, and uh, the Spit in the Eye Church. He said. <laughs> and I was thinking that's one of our problems today is we, we tend to look at the method and not at the messenger, the, the, the Son of God himself. He can do it. He doesn't even need to touch somebody to heal somebody, but he did things different ways. I kind of think it proves that it's he did it and it's not the method. It's like it, that didn't matter. But he, he did these different things. And I'll, on Sunday when you're in heaven, you can ask Jesus if you get bored ever. And you can say, why did you do it four different ways? He can say, well, I'm going to see a fifth way. <laughs> As he was sitting there, Jesus is passing by. And, and this blind man, this, who was a beggar, um, was waiting for someone, maybe to give him a shekel or a little tiny coin or a piece of bread or something, and Jesus is going by. Uh, I was looking through the gospel, and it talks about Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. So he's got, he's a man on a mission, he's the son of God uh, himself on a mission. Luke 9.51 said, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. That's Luke 9. He's already determined he's going to go to the cross and offer himself for us. Luke 13, it says, and verse 22 says, He went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. So he was already on his way. They didn't understand this yet. He knew where he's going. And on the way, he was using his power. There isn't anything impossible with God. Blindness at that time was a very common problem in Palestine. Blindness was never healed. In the city of Lydda, it was said that everyone was either blind or only had one eye that worked. In Joppa, or the Joppa Gate, the city of Joppa, there were 500 blind people in a population of 5,000. Blindness was a huge problem among the people. Leviticus 19, verse 14, if they read the Old Testament scrolls, and I'm sure they had heard it, thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear the Lord. I fear, fear thy God. I am the Lord. So they knew the word of God told them, you're not supposed to curse a deaf person, Get out of my way, you know, whatever. And you're not supposed to hinder a blind person from coming to God. And they were doing it. It means they weren't obeying the scriptures they already had and knew quite well. But be careful about who you trust. Don't just trust anybody that's going by. I wouldn't say that. Open yourself up to people you can trust. And you'll learn that there are some people you can trust. People who will accept you for who you are. People who will encourage you, they're willing to help you, they don't have any secret agenda, they're not trying to take advantage of you, they just are willing to help. Those few people are the ones that you can entrust and they can become friends. I never would say just accept anybody to be your friend. I think everybody only has just a few people. But when someone is loves you, encourages you, <coughs> They have a humility about themselves. That's how you can begin to identify, is this someone I can trust? It's a person who's humble, loves God, loves you, has no secret agenda, isn't trying to put you down to make themselves look better. Or uh, Southern Baptist Convention, a number of years ago, and they were hosting the Summer Olympics, and they removed all of the homeless people from Atlanta so that no visitors would see that they had homeless people. It reminded me of the story of Bartimaeus. 
The blind beggar put his trust in Jesus, which was really smart of him. He was bold, he was courageous, he didn't listen to the crowd. He shouted out louder. By the word, the, the Greek word when he shouted out later means is crazo. Crazo. Crazo! It's like he was shouting loud, really loud. Shh, quiet. Hebrews 4 16 says, Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. What's he crying out for mercy? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help he in cried our out to Jesus that had not been written yet. Hadn't been written yet. The book of Hebrews was written way after this happened. <coughs> Jesus is always listening to those who pray with faith. So if you pray with faith, he'll listen to you. Jesus stood and he commanded him to be brought unto him, and when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Jesus knew the man was blind. He knew the man needed to be healed. Why did he ask him? Why did he stop and ask him? He wanted Bart to ask in faith. And he wanted everybody else to take note of what's going on. He wanted them to hear a blind man <coughs> got it. And the blind man asked in faith. He did it so that other people would hear and realize what's going on. Or they might miss it. Like they were missing most of everything else. So here's the application for you. What do you want Jesus to do for you? What do you need Jesus to do for you? Don't be like the crowd that says, shh, shh, shh. We don't want to tell anybody I have any needs. Don't, don't tell anybody, shh, shh. How about admit you have a need? I can't think of a safer place to do it than here. You are the most wonderful, God-fearing, I love you people. This is a safe place. You could actually say, I'm having a problem. Would you pray for me? People won't shun you, they won't kick you out, they won't make fun of you, they won't reject you, they'll accept you here. This is, we have a special place here. I thank God for that. Amen. Jesus is looking for people who have faith and will cry out for mercy. Just admit it and ask for help. He loves to answer your prayer when you ask like that in faith. Consider this. Jesus healed him, and the first phase that he saw is the face of Jesus. The first face that he saw, if he had not admitted his need, if he had not cried out anyway, if he hadn't cried out to Jesus, he'd have still been blind and never would have seen him. And this was his only chance to cry out because Jesus was passing by 